Hey everybody, and welcome to another live video. Today we are talking about RV depreciation. We had a question, where's my watch? We had a question uh, if we worry about uh, the RV and how much it depreciates. Uh, as we all know, RVs depreciate just like a, a vehicle would. They, they're considered more like a, I guess, a car, truck, and... Rather than a house. Rather than a house. So of course they're on depreciate. And uh, is it something that we worry about? And Sabrina will the kind answer of take that is answer. Yes and no. So I wouldn't say we worry about it or we worried about it, but we were aware of it. Even before we bought our RV, our thought was when we were looking at what price we wanted to spend on an RV, we didn't want to end up being upside down for an extended period of time. So you can finance the RV for a long time, like a house. So you can finance this. We financed it for 15 years was the financing terms for this. And we knew that there was no way with a $500 a month payment for that long that we wouldn't end up upside down. So that really went into us deciding how much we wanted to spend on it. And from the beginning, when we first got it, we were saying, okay, even if we didn't pay it off, let's just make sure if we did want to sell it or we didn't want to do this anymore, that we wouldn't be upside down and that we could sell it at least to break even. And that was kind of our thoughts when we first got it. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the the fact that it was going to depreciate, that we knew that it was going to depreciate, I wouldn't say it was a worry, but it was a concern. And uh, like Sabrina said, it really did go factor into what our budget was for the RV. And then, like she said, we did do the 15 year, but knew that we weren't going to wait the 15 years to pay it off. In fact, we, we kind of fast tracked it. And we mentioned yesterday in the video that, the RV is paid off now. And that was like uh, part two of the question was knowing that with payments and it would take so long, you'd, and he, I think he even wrote in the comment, you'll always be upside down. And that was a, that was a fear. We didn't want to be upside down on the RV. So, but my other part of the, my answer to, to him and somebody else had asked the same thing was that, yes, we're taking a financial loss on the RV but we feel we are getting the value out of the RV uh, for what we spend for it and what we bought it for and how we use it. We have over 70,000 miles on it. We feel like we are getting all the value that is in this RV out of it. We feel like we have enriched our lives. We've made, we've met friends and like uh, because of the RV lifestyle, we actually made friends from this lifestyle Good, good friend, like the best of friends. Like, That's I true. mean, really like just lifelong friends, like it's lifelong friends. Uh, uh, these are people that we will keep in touch to, you know, probably forever, as long as we live. It, it's, it's amazing. And the places that we see. So yes, financial, buying an RV doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, so if you're, I'm sure there's people out there and there's people that go out and flip RVs and they can make a profit, but you're purchased. I mean, you got to be really good That's at what you're doing <laughs> and it's not us. Yeah. Some RVs do hold their value better than others. Uh, I know Airstream right off the top of my head is a, a uh, RV that does hold its value better than, better than others, but I'll let you talk a little bit more about maybe some of the other things that have enriched our lives through RV. So, so first I'll say, hi, Gunslinger. Thanks for joining <laughs> us. You made it. <laughs> also at a Al and Chris. Hey, guys. How are you guys? Or gals. Good life. So other things we've done, our experiences. He's mentioned the experiences, the people we've met. We've seen so many amazing things. We've learned so many things. There's things when we're driving and we're like, hey, what's that? What is that? Why is this such and such? Why are street signs like this? Why does this place look like this? And we'll look it up online. And we've learned so much about new cities. We've learned so much about the new places we've been. And I feel like that's the value in the RV. It's not so much the money and what we spend on it. Also, we get to watch Belle explore and go to new areas and <laughs> sometimes get like stuck on cacti and stuff. But <laughs> yeah, that was but. I mean, it's fun, and we enjoy that aspect of it. And we get to spend more time together, which was, I mean, that was yeah, the number one reason deal. for us getting the RV and changing up our lives. Sabrina left her full-time job at the hospital, and I sold my company and small business, we'll say. Company sounds big. It's my, my small business, and uh, the, the goal was for us to spend more time together because we weren't spending any time together, and mm -hmm. we just... there. The, the, the RV has brought so much 
value back into our lives and we get to talk so much more and actually spend more time together and experience these things together. Again, that's just another, you know, it's a, a different way of putting value on something. Um, I think it's the, just the best way to it's really say it. It's not all monetary, it. so. It's not all monetary is a good way to say it. And I think, like you said about the street signs, I believe we were in Arizona mm -hmm. and everything was written in kilometers. And I said to Sabrina, I said, I don't know what's going on here. I said, what, what just <laughs> happened? And there's a section in Arizona where they, they were going to test out kilometers and make it like nation, the US. Yeah, yeah. make it nationwide. And uh, so I forget how many miles, well, I feel or like how it's many like kilometers. Twenty something, twenty something. All the street signs, the uh, exit signs, everything was in kilometers. And I was like, "What is going on?" So we looked it up, and we found out that you know they, they had planned on doing this in the '80s, yeah. and then it fell through, and then they never switched the signs back because now all the businesses had their things pre-printed, the addresses, maps were pre -printed, their addresses <laughs> had go this many. Yeah. And so they didn't want to switch everything back to miles because it was going to cost the businesses so much. So they left it. And that's why it's randomly in kilometers. When we were in Texas, the first time we went, we drove through Texas, we actually saw on the highway. A giant tumbleweed. <laughs> we were like, I thought that was just something that you saw in movies. I didn't know there was actual tumbleweed that went through the, <laughs> across the road, like a, like an old Western. So but it's been a lot of fun. Uh, RV life has suited us very well. We, well, I've owned a house. I think I've said this before. I've owned a house. I've owned a condo in my life. Uh, we both had a, apartments. And this is by far the most fun way that I've lived. By, yeah, by far. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, there, there's no, for me anyway, there's no comparison even. I agree. Um, so do you want to talk about how much the RV costs? Oh, how sure. much it's gone down in value? and that Yeah, so, so we bought the RV used. It was uh, six months old. Somebody had bought it didn't like it like right away and traded it in and we swooped in quickly and bought it <laughs> because we felt it was a really good price. Uh, it only had 5,000 miles on it at the time and we bought it for $79,000. 900. 900, <laughs> let's say 80,000. So that for us, when we were shopping around for this model, we knew that this was the floor model we wanted with the options we wanted, the color, like ev this was everything we were looking for. And it was $10,000 cheaper than anywhere else in the country. We bought it at um, Schaefer's RV and Truck Sales in Ohio. We highly recommend him. We get nothing at all for recommending him. He wouldn't even know who we were if you, <laughs> if you went in and said, hey, we, you know, Kenny and Sabrina. But just a great guy. His staff was awesome, and they made the whole buying process the easiest super thing simple. we have ever bought. We did it on like a Saturday afternoon, yeah. and it was super Very simple. Very easy. We'd go back for our next RV. Our next RV, we'd buy it from them again with no question. I don't even think we – it's sad to say I don't even know we'd shop around because we had such a great experience with, with him and the, and his, his staff. But uh, So we bought it. We've put uh, over 65,000 miles on it, so now we're over 70,000 miles total. I did some searches this morning. This RV with 20,000 miles on it, uh, same year, similar options, 22,000 miles, is selling for about 69,000. We did what's called a NADA. RV Guides. RV Guides. You can go in and it's like blue book for RVs. And this RV with our miles on it, uh, low ball retail was- 49,000. Yeah, forty nine fifty. The average is sixty. High ball, and it was like sixty five thousand. So it's lost twenty thousand dollars in the last three years. But again, I feel like we've definitely got that got that twenty thousand dollars out of it. I don't, I don't know. I I'm not. I wouldn't complain at all about the uh, the depreciation um, of the of the RV. I, I really. I agree. I agree with that. Yeah. It's just, that's what it is. <laughs> but I thought it was a great question. So yeah. I don't know if you have any questions on so that. So Brenda said, even with the new RV that I want, I figured out that over about five years, it's going to equal the rent. That's true. That Depending on where you live, um, for us, it's very close. Um, we were paying more in rent than we spent on the depreciation of the RV, but that's not taken in consideration gas. So once you throw, stays. yeah, or the RV stays, but just the RV itself is cheaper than an apartment. If, if you just bought an RV and parked it somewhere and, and lived in it, it'd be cheaper than apartment. But for us, really, 
it's the travel that we enjoy. Um, we, we enjoy getting out. We enjoy meeting with everybody and just learning stuff. So let's see what we got here. Okay. The place we bought our RV, Schaefer's RV and truck sales or truck and RV sales. It was in Delta, Ohio. Yeah. Awesome place. I wish we... I wish we were sponsored by them. <laughs> we don't actually. You always are wishing that something. Was some sponsor. We don't. We don't uh, praise them enough, or whatever the word would be. He would. They really were great. Mm -hmm. Even when we went back there one time, we were just looking at a Forza. Just looking. About a year yeah. ago, we were looking at a Forza, and we were there, and he was just so low key. The owner of the place was just so low key. And he didn't pressure us or anything. He's like, eh, let me know. He came in. He's like, can I help you with anything? He's like, I remember you guys. Can I help you with anything? We're like, no, we're just looking. And he's like, all right, let me know if you want to buy something. Yeah. And the way he keeps his prices down is that he owns a farm and he turned the front end of his farm into a dealership. He is like a no frills, I guess. There's no big showroom. There's no big office. Remember the office was like a little room with three people in it. Right. File cabinets still. <laughs> and he's just old. He's just an old school type of guy. Yeah. Flannel shirt, jeans. Yeah. He's just chilling. Like I said, no frills. You're not going to sit down in the lounge and someone's going to bring you coffee. I don't even think he had coffee to offer you. I don't know if you. Noticed, yeah. he, And that's how he explained it to us, too. He's like, he's like it's me. It's my, 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 family. my family. We have no overhead. And that's... Because we asked him. We were like, how are you cheaper than everybody else? He's like, just have no overhead. Yeah. Here. He's like, I own the property. It's on my farm. Right. And they're actually literally the second, second class B van dealer like Travado dealer in the country, yeah. even though there's so no frills. And even though literally he got on like a tractor after we left, like got on a tractor <laughs> drove and drove behind to the field. <laughs> I was like, oh, that was interesting. It was a very interesting <laughs> buying experience. Even when we were driving out there, because we, you know, we lived in Virginia and we drove out to Ohio and we were like, and we were driving, we're like, we're out in the middle of nowhere. There, This can't be right. We thought we were going the wrong way. We're yeah. like, there's no way there's an RV dealership out here. Because <laughs> there's nothing out there. Yeah, it's true. So AL said, I have my RV for two and a half years and I want to do some upgrades. Do you think that's a smart idea? I guess it depends on uh, what the upgrades are and and uh, what you're going to do to it. Or, and, or how are you going to use it? Like, how is it advancing or enhancing your RV? So Brian and I have done upgrades to our RV, and we try not to be impulsive. We really try to think about what it's going to provide for us. Is it safety for Bell? If it's a safety issue, we almost always, you know, it's, it's almost, all right, let's do yeah, it. Yeah, we it's really a, it's don't a safety think issue. about it. If it's a comfort thing, we think about it a little bit more. And, and really, I, I think for us, and I, I, I can't remember if uh, Al's situation, if he's full-time or not, for us being full-time, the fact that, we use the RV every day, whether it be moving or not. That I think plays into a situation too. Like, you know, some of the things that we really love, like our Magna Shade, we love it. But I think if maybe we were in full time and where we weren't using it yeah, a few days every day, a few days a month, we'd probably be okay without it. Mm -hmm. But since we use it all the time and set it up, I mean, it's the first thing we set up when we park. It's the only thing I set up it's when we park. That and the dish trainer. <laughs> So I, I think when you, you got to think about how much use are you getting out of it? Is it a daily thing? Is it a weekly thing? Uh, we we bought a, jeez, uh, a, a gazebo that pops up super easy. The the, the, the product, clam, like the, super clam. Yeah, it's or yeah, that's right. It's called a clam, and it's super easy to use. We love it when we use it, but we don't use it that often. So looking back, we wouldn't have purchased it. Like I said, we love it when we use it but we don't use it that much. We don't use it enough, or we don't use it as much as I thought we would. Yeah, we've almost given it away a couple times. <laughs> yeah, and it's really nice product. It's great, it's well made, and uh, it's just something that we just don't use as much as we thought we would. So when it comes to upgrading your RV, you know, depending on what it is and how much you're going to use it, um, yeah. I, I don't think you'll get value out of it when you sell. Right. So even like solar, I mean, you can try to get a little bit out of it, but you're not going to get a huge markup. Yeah, you, I would say maybe you could sell you, the RV would sell faster if you had a couple upgrades in it. Like if you had a RV that already had solar installed and a safety plus bar and uh, lithium batteries, you might be able to be like, oh, people will be like, oh, this is already set up the way we want it. We want it solar. So this is going to save us from having to do it ourselves. But I don't know how much extra they would actually pay for that. 
<laughs> what? Sorry. No. <laughs> so Al, Al said, to add to my question, I want to replace the sofa and add an inverter. I only use my RV for weekend trips and during the summer, major road trips. In about five years, I want to trade it in. So uh, the inverter, we really like having Five years, I think I would do it. Yeah. Sofa if and you're inverter. only having it for five years, I would do the inverter. Inverters I would do the sofa too because we would yeah. love like a, yep. a double recliner. I think both of those things are actually very reasonable. The inverters don't cost that much for, especially for what you're doing to get out of it. I mean, being able, if you have no inverter now, I think an inverter is a must in an RV. I, I, that's how I feel anyway. We use the inverter a lot. Mm -hmm. um, even if you're not full-time and just while you're driving down the road, Sabrina's able to pop the inverter on, charge our laptop. Um, it, it operates the booster and TV. I, we like having the inverter. Yeah, we would do it. it makes it very convenient. Yeah, Having an inverter makes things convenient for us. So, and I know you like the sofa. Yeah. And we'll post, we'll post the link to Schaefer's down in... Mm -hmm. Kenny will post the link to Shapers in the description box, <laughs> wherever he does that. <laughs> all right. I think that's all. All right, everybody. Well, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thanks for stopping by and joining us. Nice seeing and, you guys. And uh, I think we're going to be back tomorrow with another video, but I can't remember. can't remember what the topic is. <laughs> all right, everybody. Take care. Bye, guys. Bye.